Gupta and I welcome you all to my video lecture of ACCA SBR current issues. So I am a teacher for SBR as well as FR and I have also started teaching diploma IFRS now. So let's begin with this lecture and before I begin with it let me tell you that this is applicable till September 2023. So current issue is such a topic which everyone is afraid of that God knows what will be tested in that. Uh, it's treated as a grey area but here in this video if you listen to it till the end you are going to get everything simplified. So do watch the full video and understand it. After watching it there's no need to read anything from anywhere else. It's just enough. All you need is focus, attention and answer writing technique. Okay, so the first current issue which is there in your uh, syllabus is accounting for digital assets. When I say digital assets, I mean the assets which are there in electronic form. I'm not talking about a laptop or I'm not talking about a plant or a machinery or a building. No, I'm talking about digital asset, electronic asset. So we will be talking about cryptocurrency and initial coin offerings in this particular heading. Then you have natural disaster. So here you will discuss about the uh, pandemic as well as the climate change. So in some study material they call it as a current issue for the climate change and somewhere they call it as the current issue for the pandemic. So that is one and the same thing. So for solving such current issues, questions, you should first of all know the accounting standard, the IFRSs. So you should be aware of all of them, like what is the correct accounting treatment. So if you know that, for example, whenever I will just give you a brief intro into this topic. So for example, a climate change has happened, right? Currently, that's what is going on, global warming and all. So that means if a company is polluting the environment, maybe according to the laws of that country in which that company is located, they have to conduct a drive through which they reverse the environmental damage that they have done. So that is happening because of the climate change that has happened. So when you're reversing that environmental damage, so what can you think of? Quickly, just tell me, you can pause and just think what comes to your mind when I talk about environmental damage? So if you have guessed it right, that means your preparation is at a good pace. So that is IS 37, environmental provision. So that is what is created when basically we have to reverse any environmental damage. So a climate change gave you a situation that, okay, this is happening. Now what is happening for what accounting purpose is what we are doing right so what is for the accounts that i have to do if there's climate change so if there's climate change i have to reverse the environmental damage if i have to reverse the environmental damage what is the accounting implication creation of a provision for environment right so if you know the standard you can easily crack this bit so for solving current issues the input which is required is your syllabus your IFRSs. So that's why my students who are enrolled with me or who have attended my uh, revision workshops, I told that I will do current issues towards the end of our syllabus. So natural disaster. Then we have uh, the next thing that is management commentary. We will discuss that. Then we have materiality. So these are the four current issues in your syllabus. Previously, we had presentation, disclosure, etc. But that has now been waived off. So in the current syllabus, at least till September 2023, this is what you are supposed to cover. So if you are planning to give your exam in, uh, after September 2023, then stay tuned on this channel. I'm sure I'm going to post the update as well. Okay. So now let's quickly start with digital assets. So what basically digital assets I'm talking about? Cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is what? 
cryptocurrency we are all aware of it's the most famous things these days that we are investing into digital assets we are buying cryptocurrencies or initial coin offerings from a you can say unregulated market you know in traditional days we used to buy shares even today some of us do buy shares then we started uh, trading in derivatives futures options and now we are switching on to cryptocurrency so this is a new thing which has come up and it is based on blockchain technology so you need not know the very much detail of what cryptocurrency is but yes you just should know that in cryptocurrency for accounts purposes what is going to happen so when i buy a cryptocurrency i am giving out cash and i am getting something so that something how to treat that is the question in your current issue so since the use of cryptocurrency is increasing the accountants are facing trouble that how should we record this thing this is a new thing it was never there before it has just been invented right so should i keep it under is 7 that is cash doesn't meet the definition of cash under is 7 cash means which is used as medium of exchange so if i want to go and buy some groceries i will go and give the shopkeeper the cash and buy the stuff i want but can i go to shopping and give cryptocurrency to that person and buy the stuff that isn't yet possible in many countries so if i talk about india in fact so they're saying cryptocurrency they really uh, not prefer cryptocurrency even as an asset right so it cannot be called as medium of exchange because it is not legal tender money that is what medium of exchange is legally approved medium of exchange so cryptocurrency is not yet that cash so is 7 cash not applicable cash equivalent can i call cryptocurrency as cash equivalent um i would say no why because number 1 it is not used as medium of exchange plus it is not readily convertible into cash because its value is ever changing so these are two different points that it is not readily convertible into cash because it might go in negative value or you know if i talk about normal cash equivalent its value will at least remain same or stagnant for some months or for some weeks whereas cryptocurrency's value changes like in seconds right so if something is changing in seconds how can i call it as cash equivalent so because of that reason it is not even cash equivalent so is 7 totally cut it is not is 7 then can i call it a financial asset under is 32 so you should know what is 32 says financial asset is anything which gives you a contractual right to receive payment right so that payment can be in form of any uh, it can be in the form of any other asset also so basically it gives a rise to a financial liability or equity in the books of the counterparty that's what a financial instrument is it's a financial asset in the books of one company and a financial liability or equity in the books of other so when i buy a cryptocurrency i am getting the right to receive the payment that is not true because cryptocurrency is not having a regulated authority there is no company which says you buy this cryptocurrency from me and i will make you that payment no it is not a share that a company is sitting there and taking the guarantee that it's my share i am giving this share and if you buy it later on i will give you share in my profits no this is not there so this is not a financial asset because it is coming from a very unregulated market where there is literally no one to take or own the responsibility of the cryptocurrency so it's not is 7 it is not is 32 therefore it is not ifrs 9 then what it is 
can you think i believe most of you must have guessed it it is is 38 intangible asset so here you will talk about that yes it is intangible because it has no physical substance it has no physical substance plus yes it is separable that means i can sell it whenever i want to sell it it is separable it has a value it has a market so it is meeting the definition of intangible asset it is identifiable because it is separable and if it is an intangible asset the problem arises as i said it is current issue what is the issue the problem arises the issue is yes it is intangible asset but what model should i apply for the valuation what model should i apply should i apply cost model or should i apply revaluation model you think yourself cryptocurrency is something which is like dynamic it is changing like in seconds milliseconds so cost model will be very stupid maybe i bought it at dollar 10 and today its price is dollar 10 billion so that would be so stupid to record something worth 10 billion at dollar 10 right so that's that's the uh, you know dynamics of a cryptocurrency so that's why we will go for revaluation model of is 38 now the issue which i talked about is that because it is so dynamic it will be more preferable or it will be better that we keep it under fair value through pnl model you might be feeling ma'am fair value through pnl is not there in is 38 yes so that's what the issue is because if someone's value is highly volatile and you want to sell it in a shorter term cryptocurrency is bought for trading only right nobody wants to keep it until they uh, turn old right they want to sell it they want to trade with it so if my intention is to keep it for short term i should have kept it under fair value through pnl that means the gain or loss should have gone through pnl but in is 38 there is no such provision if i go for revaluation model i will have to take the gain or loss through other comprehensive income so that is the issue so first the identification is the issue then the recording is the issue the valuation is the issue so we want to keep it under is 38 it meets the definition of is 38 but the problem is that i don't want to take the gain or loss through oci but unfortunately currently we have to follow this method only but some accountants who are very very smart they uh, you know go for an accounting policy they make change to is 38 they give a proper disclosure to it they have created a gray area they are not even applying is 38 properly so they are taking gains and losses through pnl and they give a disclosure so they have created such an accounting policy nobody can question them because see we need a new standard on cryptocurrency or we need something which will uh, allow us categorize cryptocurrency as an exception to ifrs 9 or is 32 so that we can hold it under fair value through pnl method so that's why is 8 and is 38 is 8 accounting policy and is 38 intangible assets are applicable on cryptocurrency cool now let's move to the next one that is initial coin offering that is ico so what is an ico basically it's like a coin or a token this is a token so company x company x has given its token to the or uh, it has released its token in the market so when it has released its token in the market what has happened is people are buying people are giving money so cash is coming in cash is coming in cash is being debited but something is going out so why would anyone in the world buy a token by giving money so there must be some kind of uh, logic to it 
so it is giving certain certain benefits so let's see what are those benefits okay so initial coin offerings are a method okay initial coin offerings are a method of raising finance through cryptographic assets investors sometime called supporters buy into the ico and receive tokens in exchange this is similar to approach used in crowdfunding with icos originally used by tech entrepreneurs so this is basically the cryptographic asset it is a digital asset where you are raising finance by giving that token and receiving money in exchange what is crowdfunding crowdfunding is basically your uh, way of getting funds from the public that means you get funds from very uh, highly dispersed group of people especially through internet right so that's what ico is so cash is debited what is credited either a financial liability equity revenue or is 37 so why did i say financial liability equity revenue or is 37 because the crypto uh, sorry the initial coin offering can be of various types where when the company is giving out the token in exchange of giving out that token they are giving a cryptocurrency so i gave you a co uh, coupon and i said give me money so with that coupon i must be giving you something which is adding value to you so that something can be either a cryptocurrency or it can be a product or service if it is a product or service i call it as utility uh, ico or it can be a security token what is security token which gives you equity in that company or it gives you the rank of a loan provider in that company so it can be crypto product or service or you get debt or equity in that company by buying that token by buying that coin so cash debited for that company they will debit the cash if it is a cryptocurrency then what they will credit they will credit their cryptocurrency if it is a uh, security token either they will credit their financial liability or they will credit their equity if it is a utility token then they will credit their revenue if it is not any one of them if it's an exceptional situation so in that case we will treat it as a provision that means we will have to make a liability out of it uh, it's it's in gray area so we will have to create a liability or a provision for it whatever money we are receiving so that's what it is for initial coin offering so i am sure that you guys must be thinking that ico is not that tough so that is true it is not that tough so make sure that you understand the digital assets and by having this lecture you do get that capability to write it yourself so if you feel that okay whatever i have taught you for the digital asset is clear to you well and good if not if you still feel you uh, need certain content so you might read that out for your purpose but if whatever i have taught related to this if you understand that and you can write it in your own words then nothing like it because that's enough i have covered everything out of the digital assets cryptocurrency and ico okay the next and the favorite of the examiner natural disaster and pandemic so we'll also do a question on it today so natural disaster and pandemic how do you treat this or climate change also in your accounts how does it affect your financial statements that's what matters to us right how it is going to affect the financial statements the natural disaster and the pandemic so what kind of natural disasters am i talking about it can be volcanic eruptions earthquakes droughts tsunamis floods hurricanes or 
pandemics like covid so how it will affect us or our financial statements number 1 it's an indicator of impairment right so if i talk about my property plant and equipment so it is an indicator of impairment so i will do impairment testing i will uh, compare the carrying amount with the recoverable amount and i will find out the impairment and charge it to my pnl but there can be a situation where my ppe is actually destroyed so if the ppe is destroyed in that case you have to derecognize it so either it is impaired or it is destroyed what about ifrs 9 in ifrs 9 we impair the uh, debt financial assets remember what type of financial assets are impaired the ones which are kept under amortized cost and fair value through oci so when i talk about their impairment i'm talking about the credit risk here in the pandemic so many people lost their jobs right in a disaster like flood tsunami people lose their resources they lose their documents they lose their money their houses their pp so in that case of course if that person was supposed to make any payment to you so you will feel that now the risk has increased right so you will impair your uh, financial asset you will create a loss allowance on it so ifrs 9 will be affected or applied in that situation is2 again it will also lead to obsolescence of our inventory where i have to keep it at lower of cost and nrv so it's a very very important point make sure you remember this is2 so impairment is the first and the foremost thing that should strike your mind whenever there is natural disaster pandemic or climate change okay <clears throat> the next thing is your insurance so what happens in insurance if there was a disaster of course you would have insured yourself against losses so if you have done that then obviously you would be expecting certain claim that means insurance company will give you some reimbursement or some kind of relief so if it is virtually certain that i am going to receive that claim then i should disclose sorry i should record a contingent asset that is what is 37 says that when it is virtually certain virtually certain is approximately more than 95% of probability then i should record the contingent asset if it is not virtually certain it is probable then i should disclose the contingent asset so when i record the asset it is not called as contingent but when i disclose it it is known as contingent asset if i have recorded it it's a normal asset then right so is 37 would apply to insurance claim in case of your uh, natural disaster okay next restructuring provisions and environmental damage additional liabilities so if there is such a unfortunate event then of course there would be some people who are losing jobs so you might have to create provisions for them that is redundancy provisions or as i said environmental damage to reverse the environmental damage you might have to create environmental provisions so all of you should be aware of their rules defer tax so how is defer tax affected with uh, natural disaster of course when we create a defer tax asset on carried forward losses we make sure that our upcoming future is bright that means we are going to make good amount of profits in future against which we can set off that unused tax loss which gives rise to defer tax asset so if the deferred if the profit won't be there then how will i set off that carried forward loss against that profit so there is no point of creating a defer tax asset then so of course whenever there is such an unfortunate situation we have to figure it out we have to assess whether still 
we have the probability we have a strong evidence that we are going to make profits in the future then only we should recognize our defer tax asset right lastly going concern so how is going concern affected let me briefly explain you so in the going concern first of all is1 says that you should be disclosing any uncertainty if there is there regarding the going concern so uncertainties are also reported uncertainties are also disclosed if your going concern is totally wrong assumption then you are supposed to prepare your financial statements under break up value basis what is break up value basis when i am actually preparing my financial statements at lower of fair value less cost to sell or not lower you are preparing your financial statements at fair value less cost to sell that is nrv net realizable value so when you come to that situation that means you have lost all the hopes you are no more a going concern that means your business will not go on forever and ever so you change your assumption and you prepare your statements on break up value basis you are breaking up with the business world and uncertainties if not totally i am sure that i am no more a going concern but i have uncertainties then i have to disclose them so of course pandemic or a natural disaster would suggest such an uncertainty so you must disclose it as per is 1 so these are certain things that you have to take care of uh, as an example it is given but based on case study you will find many other things also so this is the most tested current issue i would say and also the examiner's favorite topic integrated reporting that is not part of current issue but uh, to my students i have given it as a part of your lecture of analysis right analysis and the additional performance measures but others you must be aware of one more thing that is integrated reporting what is integrated reporting why is it re required what are the six types of capital what are the advantages of integrated reporting etc so now let us solve one question on this natural disaster i will not solve but we will actually just look at it how the things are there within that particular question so let me just open it up okay so this is the question this is the scenario from june 2022 past paper so we are not here to actually uh, talk about the requirement that we are not a, here to write it you can read the requirements and stuff but we will read the question so it was purely on pandemic and it said that you are supposed to actually write or explain that how will we deal with these particular issues going concern onerous contracts then there was one more thing and then they asked about disclosures right so this question was purely on pandemic and this was the only information available for a 25 marker question so let us read it out there are several measures taken by government and banks in the jurisdiction which wing company operates in to provide relief for companies which have been negatively affected by the pandemic so they are saying that there is basically a pandemic hit zone right so there is a pandemic hit zone let me just zoom it okay 
Oké. Okay. Yeah. So there is a pandemic hit zone uh, in a country and there are several measures taken by the government and banks in the jurisdiction where wing company operates for the pandemic, right? The business reduction loan scheme provides lenders with a government guarantee of 90% on each loan to give lenders confidence in continuing to provide finance to companies. The national bank is also buying short term debt for from companies. So here basically they are talking about that how the pandemic has hit the uh, you know jurisdiction and for that government is giving certain relief in terms that it is given the uh, lender some sort of guarantee that if not your debt debtor that means the person who has taken the loan from you if not him we will repay the loan back to you and even the national bank is buying the short term debt so here you will also refer to your ifrs 9 that okay uh, this should be considered in like impairment of our receivables that whether we should be impairing it or not because yes it is giving rise to credit risk because even the government is acknowledging it but are we realizing that scheme? Are we actually getting the benefit from that government scheme or not? That has to be ascertained, right? Then, Wing Company has a history of profitable operations and relies on external financing resources. So, it is relying on external financing resources. Wing company has taken advantage of the government support measures. However, its operations have been temporarily suspended before and after the reporting date. So that's a great, you can say, uh, effect on going concern. It's material uncertainty regarding going concern, whether we will be continuing the business or not loan thing is different that is also giving rise to liquidity and profitability issues right that we don't have cash if we go out of cash that is also a bad thing and that also affects our going concern so similarly we have temporarily suspended our operations so that also goes against our going concern and should be disclosed as a material uncertainty so the impact of pandemic has created circumstances which change rapidly so the things are changing rapidly so we are not sure that we are going concern or we are not so we are just temporarily suspended not forever but we have to assess it we have to consider it we have to maybe get an expert advice or get some kind of probability from the market that whether we are going to continue with our business or not whether the lockdown will uh, get over or not so that sort of information is required to assess whether we are going concern or not okay the pandemic has significantly affected the global supply chain wing company has several contracts to sell goods at a fixed price so pandemic has affected your supply chain supply chain is like from where you're getting your raw materials so if your raw materials are not coming, processing is not happening. If processing is not happening, then of course your goods are not being made, produced. So how will you sell it to the end customer? So there are several contracts to sell goods at a fixed price. That means you won't be able to fulfill those contracts. So you will lose your customers. You might have to pay some kind of uh, compensation to your customers. So because of the shutdown of its manufacturing facilities as required by the government, it cannot deliver the goods itself without first buying them from a third party at a significantly higher cost. Okay, so we are able to meet the customer contract, but we have found a midway. We are not manufacturing because of the lockdown. We are not able to manufacture goods but we are buying it from the third party ready-made so we are doing reselling we are buying it from a third party and selling it to the end customer 
so in that case it is creating an onerous contract because what we are getting from the customer is fixed the contract price is fixed but we are getting it from the third party the goods which we are selling reselling we are getting it at a higher cost so it is an onerous contract so you will mention the rules of onerous contract from your uh, is 37 where you create a provision for onerous contract right so normally if wing company terminates the contracts then it incurs a penalty exceptionally some contracts can be cancelled without paying compensation so all of this paragraph refers to is 37 if i have to pay penalty then also i need a provision if i have an onerous contract then also i have to create a provision then wing company has several investment properties which are valued at fair value in accordance with ifrs 13 the pandemic has significantly affected the market price of these properties so basically they are saying that fair value is also affected so fair value is affected so that will create a loss uh, in our statement of pnl the directors of wing are of the opinion that the market is undervaluing its properties and have therefore decided to disregard the market prices at 31st december 2008 so the directors have their own opinion they are saying that we will not we will not take into account the market prices of our investment property because they are so undervalued so the directors claim that some of the market transactions are not representative as they are based on the transactions which are forced due to the cash flow problems of the vendors the directors have indicated that they would not sell their properties in the current market this has been a significant there has been a significant decrease in the volume of transactions in the property however several properties similar to wink have been sold in december 2008 so in this particular paragraph they are basically referring to ifrs 13 where first of all we will explain what fair value is we will give the definition then uh, we would be moving ahead and talk about that the volume of transactions has reduced so if the volume of transactions reduces then of course now that market is not active so what is an active market give the definition where the transactions happen frequently so now this market is not at all active so if it is not active it is not level 1 input if it is not level 1 input then we have to take the input from the level 2 what is the level 2 input that the similar property which is being sold so directors are wrong in saying that we will not take the fair value they are closing their eyes to the bad they are like okay there is a ghost and you just close your eyes and yeah i don't see a ghost so that's what directors are doing but that is not right so we should take into account the market value the fair value and it will come from level 2 input because there is no more level 1 since there is no active market so now you see how this thing is asked current issue so this is most famous part or the most favorite part of the examiner very easy it's just that you should know the standards current issue is just telling you that okay in if there's a pandemic that's a current issue then how you will apply your knowledge accounting knowledge to that particular situation so i would request you that please go and read through the answer of this question and try to inculcate the keywords from the uh, sample answer okay moving ahead we have the next current issue that is materiality practice statement what is a practice statement now what is a practice statement it is basically a you can say principle based statement so for example if i give you if i issue a statement that guys you have to practice the super 20 questions that i gave you for your revision from the kaplan kit now i am not standing there with a stick that making sure that you are doing it right i am not doing that 
so i would just request you that please do that so it's a non voluntary thing so same way iasb iasb issues a practice statement a principle based or a guideline that you should make judgments based upon materiality so as an accountant there are so many judgments that we have to make uh with re regards to recognition disclosure presentation so it's important that we make the judgment on the basis of materiality so what is materiality materiality is anything whose omission misstatement or obscurement what is omission that i totally forgot to present it in my financial statements misstatement is i incorrectly presented it obscurement is i hid it that means i did record it but i did it in a hidden way i wanted to hide that particular account balance or transaction so if its omission misstatement or obscurement is going to affect the user's financial decision the user's financial decision then it is material so the isb says that please make your uh, you can say judgments based upon materiality so there are various factors which are quantitative or qualitative which are used to make uh, sure that whether this is material or immaterial so related party transaction whether it is of dollar 1 or 1000 dollar is material unusual transactions are material right so that's what materiality is now the steps which are involved in making materiality judgments so they're saying that first identify the information that could be material based upon qual uh, qualitative or quantitative factors then assess whether that information is material organize the information in draft financial statements based upon their materiality then review the financial statements so this is i mean this is just a joke so if you have done audit you know what materiality is and you know that yes when i'm making my judgments for recognition presentation or disclosure i have to make it based upon materiality i should disclose everything which is material i should record everything which is material i should value everything which is material so if you know this basic concept kudos you can make an answer there and the last thing management commentary now this is least tested that's why i'm doing it towards the end management commentary is like when we issue the financial statements how would the users know what the financial statements mean so for that purpose the management gives certain kind of uh, comments on the performance of their own company so together with the financial statements you will also find qualitative discussions maybe some ratios kpis commentary like how they prepared the financial statements what are the you know other qualitative aspects their key performance or sorry their key personnel maybe there some ceo's message cfo's message so that sort of management commentary is there so you can be asked about uses of management commentary what should be the contents of management commentary right so that you can make yourself with your logic that kpi should be there the company's aims their objectives that all things should be there everything should be in a logical flow it should be linked that okay assessment of the financial statements uh, if there is some unusual transaction that should be explained in those commentary or how they you know do the costing at their end the managers the management how do they do their analysis internally that should be up to certain extent shared in the annual report so that is what management commentary is so that is least important so if you know just the meaning and a little bit about their uses that would work so that is it for your current issues so thank you so much for watching it till here if you did like this video 
do hit the like share and subscribe option and make sure you comment in down in the comment box all the best to everyone for their exam and i hope you like this video take care goodbye and bye bye